now yield two minutes uh, to the vice chair of the committee, Mrs. Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank our witnesses for being here. We are looking forward to getting your perspective of what went wrong and how it went wrong with this rollout. We were repeatedly told by members of the administration that everything would be working properly and it would all be done on time. But these false administration assurances seem to sway some people on the other side of the aisle, and they believed fully that things were going to be done on time. Well, yesterday, Mr. Waxman and I were agreeing on some things in a hearing, but last month, we were disagreeing, and he had said that nothing could be found from our committee's investigation of exchange implementation and readiness, but we were quite concerned. That definition of nothing has turned out to be design choices in the exchanges that hide unaffordable premiums, massive glitches, dead ends, error messages, system breakdowns, and Americans spending countless hours trying to navigate exchanges not ready for prime time. So I hope all of our colleagues are going to work together and join the efforts to do proper oversight of the health care law. This is taxpayer money on the line. We need to be judicious, and the past three weeks of exchange messiness have demonstrated that nobody can be a blind cheerleader for the Affordable Care Act when they see all these problems right before their very eyes. At this time, I yield, is the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Barton? I will yield back to the chairman. Chair, recognize the vice chair of the uh, full committee, Ms. Blackburn from Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for your testimony. I would like each of you to submit in writing for me how much you have been paid to date and then how much you're being paid on retainer or either to clear up. And so if you will submit that to us for the record, that would be wonderful. Um, HIPAA compliance, were you all trained in HIPAA compliance prior to beginning your contract? I'll just go right down the line. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Slavitt? Yes, we do extensive HIPAA training. Okay. Ms. Spellacy? Yes. Mr. Lau? Yes. Okay. Did you all, did your companies meet as a group with HHS before you started the process? <clears throat> Anyone? Did your companies meet together with HHS to dis discuss the integration? Mr. Lau, go ahead. I Yes, for the, the security people from CMS and Circo and others uh, have okay. coordinated the security. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let me ask each of you a question. Um, how many people in each of your companies have physical access to the database servers storing the enrolling information? Zero Campbell? from CGI. Pardon me? We have zero access to the database. Zero, okay. Mr. I, I believe the answer is also zero for our QSS. Spellacy for the verification? We have no access to CMS's servers. Okay, Mr. Lau? Uh, 2,000 people. 2,000 people have access to the database? Through the, through the key entry of the applications. Okay. You know, under HIPAA regs, no one's supposed to have direct access to that database. Okay, under the current technology infrastructure, how many separate servers or virtual servers in the cloud are being used to host and store data for healthcare.gov? And Ms. Campbell, Mr. Slavitt, I think that's primarily to you. I don't have the exact number. Um, what I can tell you is that from a CGI perspective, we have anywhere from 80 to 100 um, 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 servers. So you have 80 to 100 different servers that are holding information? That are passing information through okay. our system. Okay. Mr. Slavitt? Ms. Blackburn, I don't have, uh, Congress, Congresswoman Blackburn, I don't, we don't have the answer to that question specifically as to how many servers we can follow that up with. Uh, we don't store any data, however any personal consumer data in any of our systems. Okay. Then, Ms. Campbell and uh, Ms. Spellacy, let me ask you this. The application information, uh, is that being stored separately from the patient database information? Ms. Campbell? Could you repeat the question again? I'm not okay. 
Uh, the applicant servers and the patient database servers, are, these, are you holding this, this information on your patients and on the database separately? Are you holding those separately? So we're not holding any information. You're not holding any, okay. We're, we are provided only with limited information, uh, social security numbers, names, and date of birth, uh, which we use to match against our system. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lau, you mentioned that um, you all are working through the paper entry and then the data entry from the paper applications. Uh, that's correct, yes. Okay. So where are you physically storing the data that is collected and given to you? Uh, when the paper comes in, it's scanned and converted to electronic images, and then the paper is destroyed once the image has been verified. The electronic image is put into a database and kept only until the information is key entered, and then it's put in archive uh, and will be retained no more than 30 days. Retain it no more than 30 days. Okay. Um, Let me ask each of you, does your current system keep detailed error logs that can be referenced with the difficulties that are surrounding healthcare.gov? Ms. Campbell, I'll begin with you. Yes, we have error logs. Okay. Yes, we do keep error logs for our, our products. Tools. Okay. Yes, we keep error logs. All righty. Uh, we keep track of successful or unsuccessful application. Okay. Uh, do you want to submit these error logs to us? I will have to confer back with CMS as to what um, documents we can and cannot provide. Okay. You know, it would be interesting to see those error logs because I think it would give us an idea of how many people are actually accessing this system and then the problems that you've had with scalability on, on this. I think we'd like to see uh, what is causing these systems to crash and where the security flaws may be in this also. And uh, with that, I'm over time. I'll yield back. Thank, thank you.